Now, I do, I come from quite a big family. Growing up, I only had one sister, but five different stepdads. <laughs> which was, no, it was fine. It basically meant that at Christmas, we'd always get the same present, which was always a new bedroom in a different city. <laughs> and, <laughs> Stepdad number three out of five was Irish, so for some reason we moved to London, okay? And I don't know why that's funny, but apparently it is. And it, it was in London, I love London. I stayed in London from I was five until I was 10 years old, but something strange happened in London. Is there any men in here that remember being at school and getting their balls cupped and told to cough? Thank fuck I wasn't abused. Where did that come from? How you doing, sir? What's your name? Steve, all right, Steve, what age were you when you got your balls cupped? By a doctor, I mean, at school. <laughs> okay, was it a male or a female doctor? Male. Yeah, I lucked out as well, mate, never mind. <laughs> now, was it explained to you beforehand why they were doing it? No. Nope. No, do you know now? Do you not know, think that's a bit weird? Like, you've got a memory of being nine years old, a male doctor, like, cupping your balls and telling you to cough. Like, here's the thing. Right, it was to check to see if you had a hernia. Now, if you cup a boy's or a man's balls and you tell him to cough, if one of his testicles jumps, that means he's got a hernia, right? But what I'd like to know is, how did they find that out? <laughs> that's a little bit creepy. And I don't know about you, Steve, but just before the doctor cupped my balls, I thought to myself, I don't think my mum got a letter about this. Because <laughs> I think she would have told me or removed me from that school. Now, that was my first ever experience that I can recall being at a doctor's. So I just assumed that's how doctors made their diagnosis. Now, I don't... <laughs> I don't remember this next occasion, but my mum assures me it's true. She said, I've just walked into the doctors and just pulled my pants down. I was like... <laughs> like 10, two little testicles and a little tiny penis. Like, you're proud. Like, there you go, doctor. I said, Gary, what are you doing? I was like, do you not want to cup my balls? <laughs> he said, you've got an ear infection. Pull them back up. Can you imagine that was how doctors made their diagnosis though? Okay son, so you're dyslexic and you've got hay fever, on you go! That wasn't him smacking my balls in <laughs> The next bit I do remember, it was about six months after that, um, my mum caught me touching the neighbour's dog um, inappropriately. Right, now, in my defence, I was just checking for a hernia. Right, now... And it was the first set of nuts I'd seen outside the family. I'd seen my uncle's loads. He used to take me swimming. <laughs> I'll explain that. <clears throat> Remember when you used to go swimming? Like, the cubicles are really tight and compact. So me and my uncle, we'd be there. We'd bend down at the exact same time to take our trousers off. Except when I stood back up, I had this in my face. <laughs> he thought it was hilarious. He used to whack it off my forehead. He did. He couldn't wait to get home and tell my mum she was howling. She was calling me dickhead for a couple of weeks. But that was fine, because back then that was acceptable. <laughs> 30 years ago, it was totally fine for your uncle to smack his cock off your forehead, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Nobody would batter an eyelid. Well, he battered mine, but that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> one Christmas, he put his wally in a cracker and went, pull that, he's, he's in jail now. Um, LAUGHTER